Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Douro Valley in Portugal. So we are at a place called Quinta de Pedrala, which is essentially, it's a, I think it's on park for nights. There's a farm. It's five euros for the first night and 10 euros for every night after. I think it's one of the highest rating places on park for nights. At 4.8 stars out of five. The guy that runs it is called Jose. Apparently he's, he's a really nice guy. So we're booked in for a, a wine tasting uh, and a vineyard tour at half three, which is all done free of charge, but it's pretty nice. You may be mistaken for thinking that it's really hot. It's not, as you can see, I've got my full, got my full dry robe on. Overnight, it's like zero degrees. And then the moment the sun comes up over that hill over there, it gets to, gets to eight, nine pretty quick. Uh, but it's 512 metres above sea level. So we are pretty high up. But it is, it's an incredible place. And I'm going to show you a few bits and pieces later on as we go. But there's the, there's the camper over there. And there's the view behind me. It's a pretty spectacular place. I'll tell you what was spectacular as well, the drive getting up here. There's a German guy there towing a, a smart car and a big high motorhome. I says, how did you manage on getting up that road? Because it's pretty, it's pretty grim. And he said, it was an adventure, like a proper German man. Made me absolutely howl. Nice guy nonetheless. Five euros for that last night. And like I say, 10 euros every night after. So we're gonna do two nights here. I wanted to come here anyway, so it's UNESCO World Heritage Site. Been making wine here for, in this valley, over 2000 years. Nice. So we're here for two nights. Thought we'd do a little Come a bit inland before we start hitting the coast again. So we're here for one more night tonight and then we'll head over to Porto. Tomorrow hopefully we hit the coast up a little bit. It feels like ages since we've seen the sea. So looking forward, looking forward to that, looking forward to getting out and seeing the seeing the coast. You watch now get stung. Explain why we have different uh, uh, wines, okay? Uh, by the way, I'm Jose. Feel comfortable to ask me questions. Okay, we go slowly, I have time, probably you have time, okay? <laughs> if you don't understand something, if you need, if you want to have more information, okay? Just watch, because I've done it as pedals, the close to cover me. Oh, jeez. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. Well, why I bring you here? From here, we can see almost all the farm. The farm starts on that big trees over there, the pine trees. So it's this little hill that's coming down until the other pine trees there. This is what we call the new vineyard. And our new vineyard was planted by my father in the year that by this farm, 1985. Okay, so um, the vineyard there have 37 years old and he chose five varieties one white called Malvas de Atina and four reds called Tinta Barroca, Turiga Franca, Tinta Roriz and Turiga Nacional Portuguese name, Portuguese varieties okay? <laughs> In the end of the wine taste I have a mini test for you to fill up <laughs> Don't forget the name okay? So that vineyard over there as you can see now is north facing to the sun. North facing means that we have less solar exposition there that for example we have in this side here. It's more cold, we have less hours of sun, so it makes more fruity wine. Jose then showed us around the machinery which actually made the wine and the process behind making the wine. The whole thing lasted about two hours and we got to taste some wine at the end. It was a really, really enjoyable experience. And unlike Santa Tecla, I managed to have the right camera 
with the right stuff in the right place at the right time I managed to catch this wonderful sunrise. So this is the, the main field where people stay. I don't know how many people you'd get on. There's probably 10 EHU spots. So it's a big field, it's an amazing place. As always, we'll put the link on. So just before we go, we're heading to Porto in a minute, but I thought I'd just give you a quick show round of the place. So all this here is part of the, the vineyard. We had a tour yesterday, so I'm, a, I'm an absolute expert. So on the left here in this white building is where they make the wine and all that sort of stuff. It's an apartment there on the right, all the view up there. And there's a swimming pool as well, but I don't know if you'd get much use out of it when the weather's like this, it's absolutely freezing. And it's still frosty here. If you're north facing, you don't get any sun. So it is all frosty. So this is the view where we took the, the sunrise from. I say in the summer, I can just imagine it being absolutely heaving here, especially with it being so cheap. And I suppose something says in the summer, it gets to like 40 degrees or whatever. That's not that. If it gets to 40 degrees, that's about 20 degrees too hot for me. And I've got a walk down here, so this is all the bottles that they keep for the, for the wine making. There's a little bit of a walk to the showers. And a toilet if you wanted to use the toilet, but like I say, most people these days have their own facilities. There's a lemon tree there. I've had some lemons out there, I've been putting them in my super bock. Yeah, it's about a two hour drive to where we're going, to Porto. We're going to go on a site so we can get the oil out. We've got a load of washing to do, I've got a load of work to catch up on, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go on a site for a couple of days. This is inside. I'm not sure if this used to be an apartment or something because there's a there's a bed in there, a toilet, a shower, and a bath. There's like what looks like an old study or something there. So wherever it used to be, I don't, I like a little granny flat or something. Well, that's it. I say over 300 days a year you get sun in Portugal, and this is free. If you've got your own electric, it's free. Your first night it's a five if you're on your electric, and the second night. It's ten pound, tell ten euros and ten euros every night after. But well, I'll just take a lemon. Because we're going now. I'm gonna buy some desperados from a supermarket later. And we tried the best we could to capture the absolutely amazing scenery on the way down. We've arrived at our next site, which is uh, an orbiter south of Porto. So, probably the most, there's the camp, probably the most stress free trip that we've had getting here. Did it in about an hour and three quarters. The wee man slept most of the way. Last half an hour, we just sat there and drooled, which was nice. So, we've just got the camper set up, awning set up, and a few bits and pieces out, tidying up. Uh, we're going to go down to the beach uh, in a minute. Uh, before I just check and let you know what's going on. What we've decided we're going to try and do in February is we're going to try and be thrifty. So we're going to try and explore more, try and spend less. At this rate, we'll be back home in April. The plan is we're going to spend as little as physically possible. We're going to do a big shop and a little later on. Yeah, so we're just going to try and eat out less. We're eating out loads at the moment. Granted, it is cheap, but uh, I say supermarkets are cheap and all, so I want to just try and just be thrifty a bit. Good morning, everyone. Like I mentioned yesterday, 
the beauty of being on a site and having the awning up is that we've put everything out of the camper into the awning that we don't need so you know if we want to go anywhere it's a five minute job to lower the pop top down so today we're about to go to a place called Aveiro which is described as Portugal's Venice Welcome to Aveiro Portugal's Venice it's just where we've decided to come for the day we're going to go on one of them later also I think we do tuk tuks as well so I'm going to have a ride on a tuk tuk this is made famous by the salt industry and they do a lot of stuff with salt split up by big channels of canals and stuff like that so looks a really nice place to be fair two euros for the, for the, for the whole day parking yeah we're in a like a, 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 Ford, a Ford Transit like camper van We've got a series of bridges over the canals here as you can see they've got the ribbons on so a lot of the other places are famous for padlocks but the reason why they moved to ribbon was because it was making the bridges too heavy and it was collapsing the bridges I come in to get you I come in I gonna get you I come in to get you <laughs> We didn't want to come to Avero and not uh, not put a ribbon down. So what's it say? Rich, Lisa, Baby Rory, Van Turismo, only vans. Am I going to put it? I'll put it on. Whatever you do, don't drop it. There we go. We'll come back in 10 years. <laughs> oh, 
This will certainly be put in the road to microphones to the test. It's pretty breezy up here. So we're on our last afternoon now in Avira. Well, it's our last day here. Heading south tomorrow. Going to go heading down towards Nazare. The beach here goes on for miles and miles and miles and the whole place has got like a boardwalk right the way across, which we'll be on in a minute. It's been a really nice place this has, especially with the weather. It was so cold in, um, in the Douro Valley, it was nice to get away. Don't get me wrong, it still gets chilly in the night though. I, once it's dark, set your days over like this, you can't, be, you can't be out and about, you can't be sitting outside in the awning or whatever. It's too cold for that. We've just come for an afternoon out now just by the beach. Just before we start packing up tomorrow and all that sort of stuff. I've seen some massive waves along here. Like probably some of the biggest waves that I've seen. I think I say that every time the further south we get. Hopefully we've been starting checking the weather report from the Nazare. I'm just hoping that they get some big waves down there because I'll be gutted if we go down there. I'll be gutted if we go down there and there's just and there's no waves. We would have gone straight to the Algarve, which would have been a lot warmer. It's like eight, nine degrees there at night. I'm hoping it's probably one of the last times we're gonna to have to use electric on the hookups. Especially if we go in Morocco for a month. That'd be sweet, that. Just live off solar. It's been four nights that we've had, well, it'll be five nights that we've had here now by the time we get, uh, by the time tomorrow comes. So I'll do you an official OnlyVans brief site tour around tomorrow morning. So you can see what the place is all about. It's another CAMC site, so I'll try and write about it. It's certainly been one of the nicest places here. It feels very touristy, though. You can just imagine that this place in 10 years will look totally, totally, totally different. It's going to get it's going to get ransacked by by tourism. I suppose it's great for the uh, you know locals and stuff like that in terms of the the economy and that, but. In terms of like it's pretty nature and stuff like that. Every spare bit of land it looks like someone's building. Someone's going up, flats, condos and all that sort of stuff. It was the same with Navero yesterday. That's just one of those things like that, isn't it? That's that's life on the planet. We're running out of places that humans haven't ruined yet. Hopefully we'll find some of them in, uh, in Morocco though. As you can see again, this guy is living his best life. Bought him some sunglasses earlier on, he was absolutely loving it. Looked like like a baby Elton John. Hello. We're packed up now. We're heading to Nazare, which is famous for world record waves. So I'll just quickly show you around this site, like I've done some of the others. So a little bit like Biscarossi, really. There's pine trees everywhere. And I don't know whether that's something that's synonymous with these orbiter sites, because there's one in Nazare, which is full of pine trees or whatever. How about this? The sap gets everywhere, makes everything dead sticky. So, this is around. Things that have annoyed me is they've only got one toilet block open. So I think there's probably sort of six in a big circle around the main touring field. Only number four is open, so it's quite a, quite, I'd say quite a walk. It's about a minute and a half walk. Perhaps I'm being a bit pedantic and a bit harsh or whatever, but it's just a bit annoying. I think it was 16.50 a night for two adults with electric. So that's not too bad. Uh, it's about a mile walk to the seafront. The seafront's lovely. It's absolutely lovely, by the way. I think all down this side is. We've got a lot of older vans. It's like in the UK, if your van's over 10 years old, you're not getting it on a seasonal. I mean, some of these look like they've been here a very, very, very long time. I'll just show you the toilets. It's what you're all here to see. So these are the dishwashing things. Oh, it's like, for example, annoying the dishwashing only the warm water works on this one. So, I mean, you've got to walk. No, it's not bad to go into the toilet. You've got to walk a long way to get to the to wash the dishes and stuff like that. Let's have a little look in here. In we go. Toilets in your urinals around there. The showers is the hottest water I've ever seen before in my life. They've got these nice little baby sinks, little baby baths and stuff like that. What like I say, the showers, and you know, they can melt a witch's face. It was absolutely outrageous. So not a lot of the facilities are open at this time of year, which is fair enough, you don't mind, like, live with that. But I think when, when it's peak season, they've got things like kids club, swimming pool, 
big park. It's the first place I've been to where the Wi-Fi is good. Normally when you get there, you're talking less than one Mbps, but I think it's like nine or 10 up here, which is good and similar down. So that was, that was a real tick in the box. We've got like a cafe on site, a bar on site, which, which are open at the moment. Well, it's been a nice day. We ended up staying here for five days in the end because we just wanted just to, after the debacle that we had in Northern Portugal, we just wanted to have a bit of a break and a bit of a rest, really. I think we're going to try and hit up Morocco. I think we're only going to go for a week or two weeks originally, but we're getting a bit too, uh, a bit too overconfident. We're thinking about going to try and do a month or a couple of months and try and get into Western Sahara if we can. So it'll be a bit of an adventure for that full transit from from Stoke-on-Trent. would be nice. A lot of statics over there. Got like little chalets as well, like that like, like must be like a quarter of a static. There's, uh, there's Tango. And then here's where they must have the, like the cafe and stuff like that over there. It's a bit of a canteen. It's like a bit of a square. We'd be in a prime location if, if everything was open, all that stuff. Nice little park there with sand in. This must be the, the main square where where everything is. So there's all the bits of food and stuff like that. I don't know what they do on here. I'm not sure where it might have been bowls or something like that. The swimming pool's down there. It's like a little football pitch. A little table tennis pitch down there. The swimming pool must be around there, but it's empty. Pool room, bit of an arcade. It's got everything that you need and everything that you want. It's just a bit of a peculiar place for British tourists to come really in peak season. Probably ferry to Santander and it's a fair old drive to here from Santander. I suppose it depends what your appetite for it is and how long you're going for. Would I come back again? Yeah, probably would. Yeah, probably would. Washing machines over there and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's been quite nice. The weather's been decent. I say we've not seen a cloud in the sky since Braga. I say in where we were, we've chose this spot purposely because when we arrived in the afternoon, we thought, right, well, we'll come here because get the, the sun and all that till it goes behind those trees there. So in the afternoon, we get absolutely loads of sun. Well, I'll probably write about this site in a little bit more detail. Another thing, bring mosquito repellent. Lisa's been chewed to bits. I've managed to avoid it pretty much, but she has been chomped on good and proper. We're in trouble. They gave us like this thing to tie onto the awning just to say that we're on site or whatever. And I left it on the guide rope. So I think I'm having a bit of a moan, charging us 25 quid or whatever. But I haven't got enough time to stop and get the awning out and all that sort of stuff. Just one of those things, I have to just pay the fine and get on with it. And our next park up was a special one. I'd love it. I'd love it if we could park that way looking out to the sea. Yeah. The destination is on your left, 2445 to 72. Cheers. Thank you. Being live up in Santa, that actually took us to the place. Oh my goodness. Hey, can you get in here? What? You can you get in here? Sand? Aye. Well, I'll just drop it down and up around that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, well, the thing is, he says. Look at how you think, fucking five, six, seven, eight, nine people over here. Oh, no, I don't know if this road goes anywhere, but if you might need